Let food be thy medicine. Is that a misquote? Is that reality? And what has this man here to do with modern understanding of food and health? This is Hippocrates of Kos, who lived roughly 400 BC in ancient Greece, by many considered the father of medicine. Hippocrates was the first person who categorized diseases, developed diagnosis, made connections between the environment and physiological abnormalities. Already 2,500 years ago, he theorized that food and what we eat is related to our physiology and our mental capacity. So let's fast forward to today. The metabolic disorders that we're talking about today is mostly obesity and type 2 diabetes. They're reaching epidemic proportions, not just in the United States, but worldwide. And that's related to our more and more sedentary lifestyle and to the excess calorie intake that a lot of us have. Or in other words, we are sitting around all day, we're not moving enough, while at the same time we're eating way too many calories. The reality was that Hippocrates already made a big distinction between food and medicine. Food, according to Hippocrates, was something that could be assimilated and that could build your body's nature, while medicine was something that was able to change your body's nature. There are huge differences between our medicine that we take if we're sick and the food that we eat. What many here want you to believe on social media is that a specific food product can have a major impact on your health. They fail to inform you that the nutrition and your overall diet approach has a larger impact on your health compared to a single food item. And in this mini series, we will clean up some of those persistent misconceptions about what is food. And today we're talking about one thing that I always wanted to talk about, and that is apple cider vinegar. Is apple cider vinegar overhyped or is everything that is claimed about apple cider vinegar real? We're going to get into it and we're going to talk about the science behind this. So let's get started. But before we continue, I want to ask for a favor. We're talking food systems all the way to nutrition and health. It's always science backed. And I see many of you watch my videos and subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but it will help the algorithm a lot to spread the message around. We are trying to build a health conscious, fact driven community that cares about their health, nutrition, science, and about the entire food system. And if you subscribe to my channel, that will help us to build this. And thank you very much to everyone who already has subscribed and let's continue with the video. So let's first talk about a claim that is widely made on social media, and that is the increasing of insulin sensitivity when using specifically apple cider vinegar. So what about those two to six tablespoons of vinegar per day? Do they actually do something or is this all hype? So to answer this, let's look at the effects of blood glucose levels. Those effects are actually described not just for apple cider vinegar, but all vinegars. According to the literature, there's a considerable support of evidence for vinegar's effect on blood glucose level if you combine it with a carbohydrate rich meal. There are several pathways for that, that we don't get into the theory that vinegar can impact blood glucose by impacting enzymes to digest complex carbohydrates all the way to the mediation of transcription factors. Most of those studies are animal studies, mostly in rats and mice. They suggest quite complicated mechanisms that can increase glucose uptake into your glycogen storage in muscles. There's another pathway that can improve fat oxidation that works mostly in combination with exercise because you're going to have to deplete those glycogen levels first in your muscle. Human studies are rare to disrupt it, but there's one study that showed that vinegar intake with carbohydrate heavy meals, those meals had I believe, more than 70 grams of carbohydrates in them in one go, reduced the amount of plasma glucose in individuals that took two to six tablespoons of vinegar and improved the blood flow of the same individuals. So consuming carbohydrate rich foods, complex carbohydrate rich foods with vinegar, might reduce the activity of an enzyme, that's the alpha amylase enzyme, that is responsible to break down complex carbohydrates. That's one of the many mechanisms that might be, that might vinegar induce. Well, vinegar only works to reduce your glycemic response with complex carbohydrates, not with simple carbohydrates that are broken down on a different pathway. This effect of a reduced blood glucose level seemed to only be true if you eat complex carbohydrates together with vinegar, right? This effect was not observed when you eat the same amount of simple carbohydrates, like for example, dextrose. So to sum this up, eating complex carbohydrate rich foods together with a certain amount of vinegar will help to reduce blood glucose levels. That has been shown in mice models, rat models, and also in a human study. So now the question becomes, what happens if you eat regularly 
two to six tablespoons of vinegar every day, right? So vinegar and also, of course, apple cider vinegar has the potential to reduce your glycated hemoglobin levels in especially type 2 diabetes patients if you consume it regularly. And then if you consume it before or after or with a carbohydrate-richer food, that can also reduce your glycemic response to those foods, especially pronounced if you also do regularly exercise and deplete your glycogen muscle storage. Now, all of this implies the hypothetical need for increased insulin sensitivity. The science on this remains extremely spotty, and it remains to be seen whether or not those hypotheses are all true. So now I want to talk a little bit of the impact of vinegar on weight loss. Weight loss through a proper diet and through exercise are usually the main drivers for improving insulin sensitivity. So this is why this channel focuses on a healthy diet, and this is why I wrote my book that will teach you how to lose weight and keep it off and become healthier through changes in your diet. Please sign up. We have a Google questionnaire in the description of the video. It's anonymous and free, and it helps me to determine a little bit how much we want to price the book for, right? So, But as I mentioned, the key to increased insulin sensitivity is weight loss in combination with exercise. But with the effect of vinegar on glucose levels in blood and on increased lipid oxidation, does vinegar actually aid in weight loss? So there is some evidence that regular vinegar intake can lead to an improved loss of visceral fat. There are mechanisms that we believe to be true, that uh, vinegar will lead to an increased lipid oxidation. Lipids are your fats. And that is especially true in individuals that already exercise. Again, the science here is not 100% clear, but those are the mechanisms that we believe to be true. But remember, a caloric deficit is the main driver for weight loss. And it is important to combine a caloric deficit with frequent exercise for the many, many reasons we explained in other videos. One of the main reasons is you don't want to lose too much muscle. So vinegar supplementation during your weight loss journey, and I'm talking all vinegars, not just apple cider vinegar, may help achieve results in certain patient groups. But vinegar consumption by itself will not lead to weight loss necessarily. It really depends on the rest of your diet. Is vinegar consumption safe? Are there any side effects? So vinegar consumption is typically safe. And for most people, vinegar consumption in moderation is not a problem at all. However, there are some examples where either chronic overconsumption, this person here, for example, consumed 250 milliliters of vinegar every day, can lead to health issues like hypokalemia or osteoporosis. And then there are also some examples for people that have a lot of health complications, depending on your health history, vinegar might, might lead to more complications than it will lead to relief. For example, this person had constant hiccups, right? But for most people, vinegar consumption is in moderation. It's not a problem. And I think the biggest thing that you should be aware of is that if you intake a nutraceutical supplement, which vinegar is, right, you should look in the context of your entire health history, your health goals, and also your other dietary habits. So now what does that mean to you? First of all, is apple cider vinegar or any other vinegar a medicine? The answer is no, it is not. Apple cider vinegar, as all the other vinegars, have nutraceutical applications and they're seen as a supplement to your diet. What we know from animal and one of few human studies are two major things. First of all, vinegars can be used as a tool to achieve better glycemic control when eating complex carbohydrate heavy foods. That's especially a great tool for type 2 diabetes patients or people with insulin resistance. This is what we call an acute intake of vinegar, meaning it happens somewhere around when we're eating those high carbohydrates foods. And it does not work for shorter sugars, which we find in a lot of sweets or pastries. So the second thing we know is that if you are in a caloric deficit and you are on a weight loss journey, uh, moderate amounts of vinegar can aid in weight loss. So they can increase lipid oxidation and that helps with weight loss especially in individuals that are in a caloric deficit and that are exercising. Beyond those two applications, the science is extremely spotty. For example, the claim that vinegar improves insulin sensitivity, it's fair to hypothesize that, but we don't know necessarily whether or not that is really true. So remember, these things are true not just for apple cider vinegar, but for all vinegars. While there are more than 400 studies done on using specifically apple cider vinegar, there are only a few that has been done on human subjects. There is for sure some evidence that there will be health benefits, but are they different from the ones that are normal vinegar has? We don't know. And of course, and that's probably the most important part, 
at the end of the day, your overall diet approach is what really matters. And if you eat a lot of junk foods and a lot of empty calories, then you can take all the vinegar you want. It won't change anything. My suggestion is instead of worrying about all the vinegar you're eating, worry about the big ticket items. Did you eat enough fruit and vegetable this week? Did you have enough tubers this week? Did you eat enough protein every day? Did you limit your consumption of saturated fats? Did you cut out the sodas? Did you cut out the trans fats? How about your healthy fats? Did you have enough water every day? Those are the big ticket items that you should worry about before you start worrying about vinegar. Changing your diet is a massive undertaking and it takes years. And for many, vinegar is more of a distraction from the real issues rather than focusing on the real issues. Thank you again for everyone who subscribed. I hope this helps. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. It goes a long way. I hope this was helpful. I see you next time. I'm out.